So I wanted to make something special for my mom for her birthday. And she's got an old bird feeder that had completely fallen apart, one that I built. So I figured it was probably time for a new one. So it was just a matter of designing this thing. And I had a few ideas in my head until it eventually hit me that bird feeders like this, long rectangular boxes, really kind of look like covered bridges. My mom happens to love covered bridges. We live in Madison County. Yes, that Madison County. So, yeah, completely made sense. Covered bridge bird feeder. So this is pretty much how the frame is going to look with it fully assembled. They're six inches apart. The roof adds an extra three inches to the top or the gable area. Now we're going to actually add the roof. Okay, so this is where we're going to figure out how to cut the angles on the roof. Now since this is the front gable uh, and everything's 45, this should be a little easy. So back to this. We know that's where our roof cut's going to be. So if we want it to overhang a little bit, we'll just kind of shift this up maybe a quarter of an inch. And then we know this is going to be another 45, but it's going to be straight up and down. So basically, if we just find the center, you're right on the middle, and you can do that line. Here I'm cutting the base, or I was thinking about cutting the base, but I realized the piece is too short. Uh, I got a little nervous and didn't want to do it, so just had left the clip in to show that trust your gut in the shop change plan if you need to. Here I just went over to the bandsaw and made the cut. So gluing up two pieces that are cut at a 45 for the roof isn't exactly the easiest thing in the world. So here's some shots of me trying to take some scrap pieces and do just enough to be able to clamp this thing up. I've raised the saw blade to about half an inch here. So this is me cutting some data on the sides so that will eventually be able to slide the slots of glass in the front and the back of the bird here. So it's going to be white and red. We just want the fronts to be white. We put some tape on the top and the bottom so that we'll still be able to wood glue things together, yes, later. We don't want paint covered in that wood, so we're just going to paint these real quick and then we'll be able to do the red. We don't really care about this stuff. The extra part is getting a little extra white because really we're going to go over this in red later, so we'll just simply tape the white part and spray paint everything red. It's time to cut the base. And for the base, I'm using cedar. We're going to cut three one by fours down to about 19 and a half inches, and then we're going to glue them up together to form that base.
forgot to tape off a few spots when I spray painted. So just going and removing that paint so you've actually got wood to wood when we would glue things up. You can see that I've slid the two pieces of glass in the front and the back when I assembled all this. I've added a couple support beams here too. I should note, you want to be very careful if you make something like this to not put a nail through the glass. I managed to put it together fine, but I came real close to the glass on one of them. goes by quick, but if you screw the screws through just enough, then you can set the bird feeder on top and just tap it with a mallet. That'll give you your screw holes where you need to actually pre-drill so you don't split things later. There's a covered bridge named Imes Bridge. I mocked this thing up so it would look just like Imes. My mom's name is Irma. We call her arm. The moment you realize you've done something stupid. Wait for the look on my face. So that was depressing. When I glued everything up and I screwed up through the bottom, apparently my when I pre-drilled I didn't go far enough into the base piece and you can see I've got one, two splits there from the screws going up. I think I'm going to leave it because with the screws and the wood glue, it should be solid enough that it's not going to fall apart. And I'm just a little bit lazy, so we'll hope for the best. It's just going to my mom's yard. If the animals get to it, we'll bring it back here and we'll fix it. So here I am attaching the eyelets and the springs that are actually going to hold the lid to the feeder. Okay, so we have a finished product here. The springs probably aren't as aesthetically pleasing as I'd hoped, but I mean, this thing's gonna serve a purpose. I don't think the squirrels are gonna be able to easily get in here. They might totally destroy the thing after a week, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, but basically, we've got a spring on each side going in the opposite direction so that it's a little difficult to get open, which is kind of what we want, but it's easy enough for a human, and we're able to get it open far enough to actually spread the seed, fill the feeder up goes right back into place. So, all done. Now it's time to go to grandma's, put the thing in. got her covered bridge bird feeder. She's happy, the birds are happy, the squirrels are happy. Thanks for watching you guys. We'll see you next time.